So that wraps up the semester of Psych 101. Also, none of this was Psych 101. Next time we'll be talking about how much of the brain we actually use. Is it only 10%? And how do you unlock the other 90%? And then the week after that, we'll be talking about the other 90%. And now um, we are going to do the mini master that I was talking about. Um, so I'm gonna talk about two studies. I plan to include them months ago because they're just important for people to know all the time, but now they are just much more relevant and I can't kind of talk about them casually or sarcastically or whatever anymore and just throw it in the mix. So this is going to be pretty quick and to the point. In the mid 60s, Yale University professor Stanley Milgram put out an advertisement for participants in a study about learning and memory. So the participants didn't know that they were actually the subjects. They were told they were the teachers. And there was a person in another room that they couldn't see that was the learner. So each time the learner made a mistake, the teacher would give them a shock. So the shocks started at 15 volts, which was labeled slight shock, and ended at 450 volts. As the shocks increased, the learner, who was part of the research team, and I think it was recorded, would start to complain. They'd start to complain, things hurt, they wanted to leave. Eventually they started to say they had a heart condition and demanded that they be let go. And then eventually, as the shocks increased, they stopped responding. They just went silent. Another member of the research team was the administrator, and the administrator stood near the teacher, like in the room with them, so that anytime the teacher got uncomfortable, complained, or started to stall, or said that they didn't want to do it, the administrator would say, you have no other choice, you must go on. And many teachers did stall or refuse, they even said, I can't do this anymore, I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. And 65% of teachers went all the way up to 450 volts. This experiment can't ethically be done anymore because when the, the teachers, who are the actual subjects of the experiment, when they find out what they've done, it's traumatizing. Because these aren't malicious people. There's nothing exceptional about them. They are average people. 65% of teachers delivered clearly dangerous shocks to someone complaining of a heart condition because they felt pressured by an authority figure. Hopefully, now, if you encounter a situation like that, you will be in the 35% that would refuse. But don't assume that you were before. I don't. I don't know. Like, I really don't. Don't assume that other people that you know or like or whatever are in that 35% because you don't know until you've actually been tested and it has basically nothing to do with how good of a person you are. So the last study I'm going to talk about, well, it's, it's a concept in psychology that's supported by many studies and you might have heard it before, which is the weapon bias and basically just that we associate black people with weapons, that's it. So there's a really good paper linked in the description that has a very clear and concise and kind of short description of several important studies that feed into this weapon bias concept. But here is a quick summary. In one study, participants saw images on the screen one at a time of either a gun or a tool. and Right before each image, a black or a white face was flashed briefly on the screen. Under time pressure, people mistakenly thought the tool was a gun much more often when they saw a black face flashed immediately before that image. In other studies that I just think are fucked up, people were told to shoot an armed person. So there were black and white people that popped up on the screen and they were either armed or unarmed and people were more likely to shoot the unarmed black person. And finally, there was one study that showed these biases and errors were the same between black participants and white participants because internalized racism. So there's a line in Childish Gambino's 
song This Is America and it's just this is silly, that's a tool. This is silly. Uh, that's a tool. Yeah. I always think about this. It's about many things, but I think this might be one of them. I'm too tired to come up with like some elaborate and eloquent summary of why these these results are important or how they can be applied to systemic and social issues basically boils down to just don't assume anything about yourself don't assume what you would or wouldn't do don't assume what anyone else would or wouldn't do and don't let anyone else assume any of those things because we don't know like no one knows none of us knows no matter how much you think you understand or no matter how much you think you've figured things out you haven't like there's just always more and so when we're thinking about rebuilding changing institution systems we just really need to think about how do we build those things so that they keep us from being our worst selves we can be great we can be awful so we need to be intentional. So lastly, I'd like to talk about Elijah McLean and s s something else that's bothering me. So news outlets keep calling him a 23-year-old black man. And news outlets keep calling boys in their late teens and early 20s black men. And I've always had really specific beliefs about age and maturity, like even when I were a teenager, Elijah McLean was a 140 pound black 23 year old boy with just a very soft, sweet, kind face. And he used to play violin to the pets at the local animal shelter. Last August, 2019, he was walking home um, and like dancing to his music and he was wearing a ski mask because he had anemia and someone called the cops on him for being suspicious. So Colorado police responded and they put him in a carotid choke, which is specifically intended to put pressure on your carotid, I think, artery to make you pass out. And he did. And then when the fire department paramedics came, the police had them inject him with ketamine even though he was already unconscious which caused him to have, I think, two heart attacks and eventually he died. He was, I think, like on life support. My friend Charles Wood put together some links and information about Elijah's case and Breonna Taylor's and Marcus Smith's for things you can do, petitions you can sign, phone numbers you can call. So hopefully next week, instead of talking about how people waste 
and abuse it, we can go back to talking about how incredible the brain is, what a miracle it is, all of the amazing things that it can do, all of the amazing things that it does that we don't even know about. So I hope you'll be back next time to talk about how much of the brain we actually use. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay curious, ask questions, have conversations, listen, and give a shit, and wear a fucking mask. Shut the fuck up.